shall be comforted. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. This is the visitation period with the family.
Right at this time, we're going to uh, have the final viewing of the family. I'm going to ask that you would pray with and pray for this family. If you have phones, if you would cut them on silence for us. If you would check your phones, make sure they're cut on silence. <clears throat> if you have loved ones and friends who want to watch this service but not able to come, if they want to be outside and be on the premises, you can let them know, turn their radio outside to 104.5 FM. If they want to, well, it's on the screen. If they want to watch the service, uh, they won't be able to see uh, Mother Robinson, but they'll be able to see the service for uh, media's sake. We want to protect the integrity of the family. So they'll be able to go on one of these apps that you see, uh, Temple Baptist EC, or Facebook, or YouTube, or you can go to House of Peace FH, and they will be able to see the service. So you can text them and let them know that they'll be able to see the service once we uh, close Mama Robinson down. Amen. I, the House of Peace is coming. situation is, but I can tell you that there is a rock that is higher than we are. Lead and lean on the rock. The Bible says he's the stone that the builders rejected. They call him the chief cornerstone. I invite you to enter into this place with us. I invite you to enter into the place where the rock of our salvation well, I'm having a senior moment. It starts at 1030. That's my bad. You all can calm down. You can breathe now. <laughs> That's my fault. So at 1025, the House of Peace staff will come back and Mr. Horn, and they will come back, and then uh, we will close then. My bad. You all can breathe. I'm sorry. Amen. <laughs> we started so early, I thought it was ready. we was ready to go. All right. I 
higher than I, oh Lord, higher than I. Lead me to the rock. Lead me to. strength and glory. I want to go, I want to go. Yes, I Yes, I do. It's the part that I You are my firm foundation, my salvation, my solid you are my firm foundation, my salvation. Yes, you are my solid rock. Help me sing. You are my firm foundation, my salvation, my solid rock. My solid rock. You are my firm. Can you make that your song of victory tonight? My salvation. You declare it. My solid rock. You are my, you are my friend. You, 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 yeah, yeah. My salvation. Solid rock. My solid rock. Tell the Lord you are. You are my friend. My salvation. My salvation. I guess the one.
I'll help you sing it. It says, You gave your life for me. So I can have life eternally. So I can have life eternally. Says you paid a price. You paid a price that I could never repay. So I'll live my life loving so you every life day. Loving you every day. Come on, let's call him one more time, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, it's real simple. Can y'all say that with us? How I love you. that way, I'd mess up and then refuse your help. But you never left me.
All right, now it's time to do the final viewing. <laughs> All right, the House of Peace, Mr. Horn, Mr. and the House of Peace staff is going to come now, and we're going to have a final viewing um, at this time. Amen. Again, if you would check your cell phones, make sure that they are on silence. Also, if you have loved ones or friends who are not here who would like to see the service, they can go to Temple Baptist EC, or they can go to House of Peace FH, and the, and the YouTube page as well, so they can go to those pages and be able to see the service at this time. It's on the screen. You'll be able to text them if there are some that want to come, but they don't want to come inside the building. They can listen outside, but they have to be on the premises. Just turn their radio to 104.5 FM. Amen.
Listen in the Lord, just wave your hand. In the Lord. You got to hang on in there, in the house. Can I get a witness in here? In the Lord. Wait a minute. In the Lord. Bring it down one more time in the Lord. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If I had Frank Williams here tonight, he would come on down. And he would tell him. He would say, in the Lord. Yeah. He would say, in the Lord. Yeah. Y'all don't like this tonight. Frank would tell you, when I was sick, the Lord touched my body. We don't have him here tonight, but we got James Lord here. And I can tell you, God been good to me. He made a way out of no way. Well, let's stand to our feet, praise God for the life and liberation of Sister Lizzie Saritha Robinson. We're here today not because she died, but we're here today because she lived. Come on, put your hands together, let's celebrate her life. Come on, you can do better than that, we celebrate her life. Come on, put your hands together, let's celebrate her life. A life well lived and so we've come today to not look at the dates but we come to thank God for the dash in the middle of the dates that God has allowed her to live and then he allowed her to live in overtime and so we are appreciative for we are promised three score and ten but God gave her 92 years 92 years so that means she had 22 years in overtime so why don't we thank God for that and then let's praise God for this family we salute you Mama Teresa blessings on you God bless you you all have done a wonderful job amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're going to follow the program as printed. Uh, we're going to have scripture reading by Aaliyah Thompson. We'll have opening prayer. You all can be coming to the stage, to the mic here. Then we'll have opening prayer by Luther Cogdale. Then we'll have um, a selection uh, if you all, whichever one of you all want to do a solo or whatever, you can fix that quickly. Then acknowledgments and resolutions. Then we'll have obituary and a letter from heaven. And then we'll have a selection of praise and then we'll have the eulogy. Okay? All right. We'll now have the scripture reading.
take my mask off. be reading from Isaiah chapter 58 verses 8 through 11. Then your light shall break forth like morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your religious shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and speaking wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be, you shall be like a watered, watered garden and like a spring of water. Those waters do not fail. The Lord's word is already blessed. say good morning to everyone thank God our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for this occasion not because of the death of sister Sarita but his blessings for allowing us to celebrate her life to the great pastor of Cedricville senior of this great temple of peace we say good morning i bring you greetings from the fallen run missionary baptist church of fedville north carolina where dr reginald a wells is our pastor and again we bring you greetings earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal let us pray most gracious and all wise God, we come now in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, just to say thank you, Father. Thank you for another day that you would allowed us to get up and go about our daily tasks this morning. And again, we thank you for the life of Sarita. I remember her on various occasions when she would come back to Fever, North Carolina, and we say thank you for her children uh, we just give you honor and praise for you are worthy to be praised this morning in the name of Jesus we pray amen thank God amen
Temple Baptist Church resolution in memory of Ms. Lizzie Saretha Robinson. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God, Hebrews 4 and 9. Heaven will be sweeter and more beautiful, more to be desired because of the entrance through its shining gates of your loved one who left this earth. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to a close the life of Lizzie Saretha Robinson, I. Cedric D. Ville, Senior Lead Servant, Adults with Seniority, Parent AWS, Faithful Few Ministry, and the entire membership of the Temple Baptist Church in East Cleveland, Ohio, feel that it is befitting to express our sympathy to Sister Teresa Dawson and her husband, Thomas, and family during the passing of your beloved mother. She will be missed, but be comforted in knowing the sweet memories you have of her. We commend you to him who knoweth best and will always do right. You have my sincere prayers. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by remembering this poem. Picture me as I was, full of life and love. Although not with you now, I know how much you miss me, and I miss you too. It was my time to leave, as each of us will do. Although not in your arms, I'm always in your heart. The precious love we shared means we're never far apart, author unknown. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy kept in the church archives, humbly submitted on this 29th day of December 2021. The officers, AWS, Faithful Few Ministry, and members of the Temple Baptist Church, East Cleveland, Ohio, Cedric D. Ville, Sr., lead servant. You may be seated. Good morning. I will be reading my grandmother's obituary. Lizzie Saretha was born in Fayetteville, North Carolina to the late Walter Lee Holmes and the late Lula Ann Evans Holmes. She was the seventh child of 10 children, all who preceded her in transition. Her siblings were Fred Holmes, Rachel, Nathaniel Holmes, Lenora, Vinston Holmes, Mildred, James Holmes, Caritha Victoria, Mary McDonald, Hubert, and Claudie Mae Holmes. 
Retha, Liz, or Riri, as she was affectionately called, and I will be calling her Grandma for now on because it just doesn't feel right. And if you knew my grandmother at all, that look is real, so Grandma it will be, as she was affectionately called, was educated in the Cumberland County Public School System of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Grandma accepted the Lord as her savior at a young age. She read her Bible nightly, and if she awakened during the night, she would sit and read the scriptures. Her favorite verses are Proverbs 3, 1 and 5. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Before moving to New York City with her cousin, Grandma worked as a clerk at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. After working in New York as a maid, then as a seamstress, Grandma bumped into her future husband as she was coming out of the post office one Saturday morning. The late Fred Lee Robinson was a trombonist in Fletcher Henderson's band and a late member of Louis Armstrong's Hot Five. A widower for seven years, Grandpa soon married Grandma and 304 Madison Street in Brooklyn, New York, became their home for many years. Grandpa and Grandma worshipped at the Concord Baptist Church of Christ. While working at Chase Manhattan Bank, Grandma opened Retha's Beauty Salon and purchased an apartment building. Grandpa continued to work for the city of New York while they raised three children. Upon Grandpa's retirement, the family relocated to Cleveland, Ohio, Grandpa's hometown. Greater Abyssinia Baptist Church became their new place of family worship. Grandma studied at Cuyahoga Community College and became a licensed practical nurse. After working as a private duty nurse for nearly five years, Riri, a name her children often used to tease her, decided to open Lizzie's Place, a home for which she gained several recognitions and awards for her assisted living endeavors. Grandma was the mother of Teresa Maria Dawson, Thomas Dawson Jr., Stephen Carnell Holmes, deceased, and Angela Annette Robinson. Grandmother to Terrence Dawson, Greensboro, North Carolina, Duane Dawson, Bronx, New York, Ayana Nasia Sykes, Gregory Sykes, Bloomfield, Connecticut, and Brandon Alexander Dawson, Rebecca Galley, New York, New York. Great Granny to Miori Dawson, Aiden Dawson, Rasan Arwali Jr., my son, deceased, Aaliyah M. Thompson, my daughter, Carter Dawson, and Ethan Dawson. Riri leaves behind nine nephews and six nieces. I will be reading a letter from heaven to my dearest family, some things I'd like to say. But first of all, to let you know that I arrived okay. I'm writing this from heaven. Here I dwell with God above. Here there's no more tears of sadness. Here there's just eternal love. Please do not be unhappy just because I am out of sight. Remember that I am with you every morning, noon, and night. That day that I had to leave you, when my life on earth was through, God picked me up and hugged me, and he said, I welcome you. It's good to have you back again. You were missed while you were gone. As for your dearest family, they'll be here later on. I need you here so badly. You are part of my plan. There is so much that you that we can do to help our mortal man. God gave me a list of things that he wished for me to do. And foremost on the list was to watch over and care for you. And when you lie in bed at night, the day's chores put to flight. God and I are closest to you in the middle of the night. 
When you think of my life on earth and all those loving, loving years, because you were only human, they are bound to bring you to tears. But do not be afraid to cry. It does, not really, it does relieve the pain. Remember, there would be no flowers unless there was some rain. I wish that I could tell you all that God has planned, but if I were to tell you, you would not understand. But one thing is for certain, though my life on earth is over, I'm closer to you now than I ever was before. There are rocky roads ahead of you and many hills to climb, but together we can do it by taking one day at a time. It was always my philosophy, and I'd like it for you too, that as you give unto the world, the world will give to you. If you can help somebody who is in sorrow and pain, then you can say to God at night, my day was not in vain. And now I am contented that my life was worthwhile, knowing as I passed along the way, I made somebody smile. So if you need somebody, so if you meet somebody who is sad and feeling low, just lend a hand to pick them up as on your way you may go. When you're walking down the street and you've got me on your mind, I'm walking in your footsteps only half a step behind. And when it is time for you to go from your body to be free, remember, you're not going, you're coming here to me. Author Ruth Ann Mahaffey. Thank you. One of these mornings Won't be very long, no You'll look for me And I'll be gone on home, yes I'm going to a place Where I'll have nothing Nothing to do Right by, by my side. 
yes, Lord. The Sabbath will have no end, no. We'll do nothing but just sing and praise Him, yes, Lord. And when He says, well done, my race, my race has been won. Well, we'll walk, walk around heaven. Yes, we'll walk, walk around heaven. We will walk, yeah, Lord, walk around heaven. Every day will be Sunday, walk around heaven. Sabbath will have no end, walk around On this journey called life, all of us in this room who have traveled at some point, we've all had a traveling nightmare to where when we decided that we were going to take a trip, we dotted every I and crossed every T. We called ahead to make sure certain reservations were made. We called ahead to check the status of various facilities that we were going to visit. We made sure that we had travel arrangements made. And not only did we look ahead to the place that we were going, but we had to make sure that things were going to be solid at the place that we're leaving. But all of us in this room know what it means to have plans, but they very, very seldom work out. Because there's always an invader. There's always an inconvenience, something that happens in our day, something that happens in our week, something that happens on the journey, on the trip, that just really just shakes up the whole trip. We know what it means to have a traveling nightmare. But we also not only have had traveling nightmares, but we know what it means to move out of one place to move into another. You know, moving should be a happy time, especially when you're getting into a bigger place, a bigger home, a better home. But when you're moving, we've also had moving nightmares. Something breaks, the movers destroy something. You have moving nightmares because you have to get rid of some stuff that you've been keeping so long. You have moving nightmares because certain stuff you say, I'm gonna throw away, then you say, no, I'm gonna keep it, then you're going back and forth. You're trying to lighten your load. And also within that moving nightmare, you didn't know you had accumulated as much stuff down through the months and years until you start emptying rooms because you know what it means to have traveling nightmares and moving nightmares. But I want to come today to talk about a travel and a move in 
That's not a nightmare, but it's just a dream come true. David helps us out in these few minutes that I'll be up before you, and we'll get out of here. Uh, the 23rd Psalms is a Psalms about traveling and about moving in. But in order to move in, you got to move from somewhere. And sometimes, child of God, when we say good night, we have no guarantee if we're going to say good morning. Because we never know how we're going to be shaken when we wake up. But David comes and he says that when I start pinning the 23rd Psalms, it is something that I lived and I found out that sometimes when you travel, the journey is longer than your strength. And somebody here today, life has weakened you. You've been wounded and now the weakness it looked like is going to take over and now life has become an interrogative because now you're asking yourself, even after 92 years of living, God, where are you? Because God, I prayed, but you didn't answer. I, I look for you, but you were not found. But the question still becomes, was he ever absent? And so what God does, he begins to manifest himself on different levels uh, to help you understand that you got to have faith in your travel. He says, I know that it seems that it's a rough journey, but he says there's some certainty amidst all of this uncertainty because as you travel, you need to know some things that God is with you despite of how the trip looks. And all of us on, in this room today, and those of you that are watching by social media, you need to know, child of God, we're on a journey. And it sometimes it looked like there are some others who struggle more on their journey than we do. So the question is, where is God and what is God going to do? He's right there. Well, you need to know that you must live with the necessity of God's presence. You need to know that you need him on different levels at different times. Uh, what I needed him to do yesterday, I may not need him to do today, but I need him to do something. And so as I travel, uh, Satan is busy. As I travel, there are some snares. As I travel, there are some things, some setbacks that get in my way. And so when I deal with this journey called life, and I think that's enough an introduction, I give you three things to help you on your travel. As I deal with this journey called life, uh, what happens when my day and my week becomes a nightmare? Because whether you know it or not, uh, no matter how spiritual we are, death has a way of bringing a nightmare that'll never cease. Why? Because we're going to miss our loved one forever. It seems that we're not going to see them again. It seems that the routine is now broken. It seems that you pick up the phone and realize that they're not going to answer this time. It seems that you look at that favorite chair and you see they're not going to sit there anymore. It seems that you're ready to have a conversation. It seems that this confidant that you relied on is one that God called home. So now that I'm living with this nightmare, how do I get through this? Well, I want to tell you today, the first thing you need to understand is is that if you're going to get through this, if you're going to realize that this is not a nightmare, but it's a dream that's going to come true, you've got to realize that God must be in a mandatory position. Can I suggest to you, maybe you're suffering on your journey. Maybe your journey seems to be subtracting your strength because you got the wrong people positioned in your life. And I tell you, child of God, David says, if you're going to get through this drama, if you're going to get through these things that are happening in your life, listen to what he says in Psalms 23, verse 1. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. In other words, God is in a position that he's not only going to guard me, but he's going to guide me. Because every now and then I get lost. No matter uh, before they had these navigational systems in the car, you had to trust in MapQuest. And before they came up with MapQuest that are printed out for you, you had to learn how to read the map yourself. You had to travel. But every now and then you end up on the right road. But how many of you in this room know they used to sing, God is a mighty good leader? And I want to tell you, 
that Sister Lizzie, after 92 years, she couldn't lead herself because there was a time when times were troublesome for her, when it was rough for her. She needed God to be her shepherd. And can I suggest to you, not only was he her shepherd, but he'll be yours. In other words, you've got to have a relationship with God. God has to be positioned. Now, the problem is you try to get in position when you get a problem, but he has to be in position before the problem comes. And this is the kind of God you serve, and I'm done with this today. You need to know that he, you'll have the master's provisions because the God I serve, can I suggest to you today, he's in position before the problem starts. But you also need to know, child of God, that he's in a position to release some stuff, not when it gets risky, but he released some stuff when he makes you rest before the risk. You see, some of you, if God didn't put you to sleep at night, you're already a nervous wreck. You don't know what you're gonna encounter in a day. And if you had stayed up all night long, you wouldn't have the strength or the energy to deal with what's before you. But the good news is, God let you rest last night. Am I talking to anybody in this room? That sometimes you've had the best sleep that you've ever had because when you said your prayers, you didn't know the kind of day you were going to have. You didn't know how that day was going to turn out the next day. But God lets you rest. He lets your mind, other, other nights your mind race, but this time he lets your mind rest. Other times your emotions rise, but this time he lets your emotions rest. Other times your heart is ripped in two, but this time he mended that broken heart and he allowed you to sleep through the night. Other times you're wake up uh, and you can't sleep pains in your body but this particular night he lets you rest and then the next day all hell breaks loose but somehow your mind is rested your spirit is rested because he says listen if you're stressed out you can't see my provisions and can I tell you when it gets dark sometimes it look like you can't see your way but when it's dark that's the time that the light shines the greatest and that's what Sister Lizzie would have me to tell you today is that you'll have the master's provisions. Can I tell you, he makes a way before the way is needed, but you can't see it until it's needed. I'm not making it up. Listen to what he says. Listen to what David says in Psalms 23. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. He's in a place where he's guarding me. He's in a place where he's guiding me. And listen to what he says. He says, I shall not want. Because child of God, when the Lord is, you don't have to worry about who's not and what's not because when the Lord is, nothing else matters. Can you help your neighbor out? Tell, tell your neighbor when the Lord is, nothing else matters. I, I don't know what your neighbor may be going through right now, but you need to tell him one more time, when the Lord is, nothing else matters. How do you know? Because this is what the text says. He says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He does not take a chance in leading me into barren, burned fields. He puts me in a place where it's going to be greenery. Then he leads me beside the still waters because those of you who have some familiarity with sheep, you know sheep can't drink from rushing waters, they'll choke to death. The Lord knew that. He said, so I'll lead you by a quiet stream where you can take your time and drink without choking. Uh, he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You need to understand that this journey that you own, he leads you not just to give you a great name, but you need to understand some devastation he keeps you from because his name is on the line. Are you listening to me? I said his name is on the line because Satan wants to make God a fraud. Satan wants to say that God is not who he says he is. Satan wants to make sure that your faith is in vain. But God says, listen, I don't have to defend myself because I am. He leaves me for his namesake. But then, but here's the last thing. You have to have a moving perception. Here's where that moving day comes in. Because some of you think that life is going to leave you in the valley. Because this is a valley psalm. Listen to what he says. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm going through. Huh? 
I'm going through, which means if I'm going through, means I had to come in it, but I'm also gonna come out of it. And that ought to be good news for somebody here that's going through a dark night of the soul right now. The Lord led me here to tell you today that whatever you're in, he's gonna permit you to come out. But you're not just coming out to go somewhere, you're coming out to go to someone. And that's our problem and that's where we need to understand that ought to help us relax when we come to funerals and though we miss our loved ones, they're not missing, they're not absent, they didn't die just to go to somewhere, they died to go to someone because the last time I checked, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So thank God because she was saved, she's not lost, she's not gone somewhere, she's gone to someone. You have a moving perspective because you need to know you, you can go forward despite the failure and despite what you face. You've been favored to go forward. How do you know? Because he teaches one last lesson in this text that I'll expose today to you and you can take this home. The good news about your travel is that the valley is temporary but your home is permanent. What I'm going through is temporary, but what I'm going to is permanent. Okay, I know, I know you don't have it. I know you don't have it. I know you don't have it. You, you're not reading it, but let me throw it at you right quick. It's in Psalms 23 and 6. It says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And that last clause should say in your Bible, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So Satan comes strategically to make me give up in a temporary place because he wants to keep me from getting to a permanent place. Because when I get to the presence of God, there's nothing else Satan can do. There's nothing else Satan can say. Are you listening to me? You gonna make it. Don't you dare give up in the valley. Don't you dare give up at a temporary spot, in a temporary place, because Satan knows that I got to be so strategic in holding you back, that if I keep you bogged down and stressed in a temporary place, then you'll lose sight of your permanent place. So then, you move from being the Lord who is, then he's before me, then he's beside me, then he's behind me because he said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All of my worries will be over. So Sister Lizzie, thank you for teaching us these lessons. And thank you for speaking to me to speak to your family, so to speak, to tell them that if they're gonna make it through this, beyond these days, when they can't call you for advice, 92 years of advice, you don't just live to be 92. You gotta go through some stuff so you can tell some stuff. Yeah, you don't just exist to be 92. You got to have some tests and some testimonies. And she tells us that if you're gonna make it family, God has to be in a mandatory position. If you're gonna make it, you have to trust the master's provisions. And if you're gonna make it, you have to move with a moving perception that I'm not going to die or stay in a temporary place because I have been designed and destined for a permanent place. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. I ask now that your Holy Spirit would rest upon each person that's here, not just family, but friends as well. Thank you for all those members of Temple who have come today to share with this family. I speak a special blessing upon them those who are serving or those who are just here, I pray a special blessing upon them. Thank you for the life of Sister Robinson. Thank you for all she birthed, not just children, but thank you for the ministry. Thank you for what she birthed in this world to leave a legacy behind 
Because the record is, blessed are the dead who died in the Lord, they shall rest from their labor and their works do follow them. So let the life and the works that she wrought speak for her and that she live. Now grant them peace and serenity in the days to come and let them know that it's still not over though we're going to Cleveland Memorial Gardens. It's not even over there. Because one of these days when you get ready, the dead in Christ shall rise first and those that are alive shall be caught up to meet him in the air. So we thank you for assurances today that what looks like a nightmare is actually a dream come true. And we appreciate you making our dreams a reality. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray and ask it all and count it done. Amen. God bless you now. We're going to have the committal here. Mr. Horn and the House of Peace staff are coming. On behalf of the House of Peace staff, myself, Mr. Veal, and Mr. Horn, who are CEOs of the House of Peace Funeral Home, we would like to thank you, the family, for entrusting Sister Lizzie Robinson in our care, and we pray that things have been done to your satisfaction. And we will also, Mr. Horn and myself, would also like to present this memorial blanket, complimentary to the family, those who would like additional uh, copies of the same uh, blanket. You can call 216-341-7000. They are $310. You can secure one for yourself. And just when you're having coffee and donuts and you just want to feel close to Mother Robinson, you can wrap up in your blanket. You can sit there on the couch there. Uh, you can do that so you can secure a blanket. Uh, thank you for ministering today, Temple. I really love you. I appreciate you. I do want to remind you that on Friday night, we will have watch night services here at 7 o'clock. I invite you to come. We're also going to have communion on Friday night. We're going to be here from 7 to about 8.30. We're going to have church. So those of you that want to worship with us, feel free to do so. And then I pray, if I don't see you uh, this year, I pray a happy new year for you. I pray that you not only make a New Year's resolution, for the year, but I pray that you not only have a new year, but there'll be a new you. May God bless you as I pray. All right? You hold where you are. I'm going to um, ask that the daughter and the granddaughter stand, if you will. Mom Teresa, if you understand. You can stay where you are. You can stay where you are. Bowing in humble submission to the will of our Heavenly Father, who have taken to himself the soul of our deceased sister, Sister Lizzie Robinson. We do therefore commit her body to the ground earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, waiting in the general resurrection of the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus, who shall come in majesty and power to judge the quick and the dead. May all the corruptible bodies of those that sleep in him, may they be made like unto his own glorious body. And may all those who have died in the faith rise with thine eternal glory for thy name's sake. Amen. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of us henceforth and forevermore until we meet again. Amen. You can be seated. This time we'll have ministers. You all can put your coats on and uh, gather your belongings. Flower ladies are gonna come. The Lord shall come. 
before we get together again. we meet till we meet Paul Barrows Paul Barrows if you'll line up and follow Reverend Simmons right in the center of the aisle we need six men if possible line up in columns of twos Just in case, the Lord shall come before we get together again. I'll meet you. Shall we all stand? Evangelist Butler will lead us out. 